I can't do the rock thing with both eyes. I can only do it with the left one. What is cracking, big dogs? Welcome, bike, to the channel. Welcome, bike, to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. Big dogs got to eat fantasy football. Wide receiver rest of season rankings video. That's what you're watching right now. We did the running backs yesterday. Yes. Yes, yes to yesterday. Today's the wide receivers. We had bunk bed breakdowns this morning. Mike and Noah, we're going two for two for a little double film action for you. You're going matinee in this bitch. Mike and Noah dropped a, a dynasty video this morning. Biggest risers and fallers from the 2020 fantasy football season for dynasty in general. Okay. But we've got two weeks left of season long of playoff fantasy football battles. This is where all the money is made. This is where the grit, this is what you grinded for in the summer. We went through two days. They went through two days in 110 degree heat. We all did it. And the people who worked the hardest then probably not in the playoffs because fantasy football is completely fucking luck and nothing we really say honestly matters. That being said, let me say some shit to you about fantasy football. Week 15, week 16, wide receiver rankings, top 30 coming to your domicile first. We must tuck our shirts in. Stop yelling and let's eat. Real quick, before we start on a serious note, I got a question. If y'all want to skip to the fantasy parts of this where the rankings actually start, I'll put the timestamp right here. But I have a question. Listen, I don't have health insurance or I have a fucking terrible health insurance that actually might as well not be health insurance. So when I have like medical problems now, I need to actually like outsource them to you guys or some of my doctor friends on Twitter. I DM Dr. Morse already, so he'll probably give me a good answer. But for any of you that know anything about this, if you're like a PT or, or happen to be a doctor or some shit or just happen to be knowledgeable about the subject, I have this, I don't want to say excruciating because that would be a little bit dramatic, but I have this, this sharp pain or this like really deep soreness in the upper bike like here-ish, kind of up to my neck, and it, it fucking kills when I wake up in the morning. And when I look that way, it hurts a lot. It doesn't hurt as much when I look that way. So I'm trying to figure out, like, one, what it is. I think it's like a deep muscle strain because I didn't work out as much during COVID, obviously, and then they opened up the gym in my apartment like a month ago or so. And I've been working out there often, and I've probably been pushing it a little too hard, which led to this fucking muscle strain. And I've had something like this before, and the doctor was just like, yeah, you got a strain. You got to, like take a lacrosse ball or a hard ball, put it in like the muscle in the in the bike and, and just kind of roll up and down the wall with it, which has helped. It's kind of like a massage, but I'm just wondering if maybe it's something more serious because this has kind of been like a week now that it's really kind of fucked up and I can't work out or do anything like strenuous with it. So if any of y'all have any information on that, what it is, what I should do, do I need to see a doctor? Do I need to get surgery? Am I dead? Am I dying? Because I'd be fucking sick if I was. But I'll leave that to the professionals. Okay. Let's get into the let's get into the video. Here they are. It's just flat out, straight up, straight up. My rankings. Top 30, wide receiver, top 35. I can't read good, but I'm just gonna throw them up on the screen for y'all. Okay, and these will be updated as new injury reports come out. And if you want the wide receiver rest of season, running back rest of season rankings as they update throughout the week, as well as my in-season weekly rankings, which we'll post tomorrow, that'll be on Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash B D G E. Alrighty, so not much movement on the top of things. You could see the top four, top five, top six, no debates there. Devontae Adams, Tyree Kill, DK Metcalf, DeAndre Hopkins, Keenan Allen. I did swap Hopkins over Keenan Allen just because he's dealing with this little hamstring bike injury. He's got that Thursday night football game tomorrow. He is getting in a limited practice. So is Mike Williams. So I do actually expect both of them to be out there. But since Eckler has returned, we've seen a little bit of a dip in production from Keenan Allen, as well as just the overall scheme of the Chargers to throw the ball downfield a lot less, which is impacting Keenan Allen's bottom line. Not good for the revenue, but still very good player, getting very good volume. Can't move him down any further than top five, top five, top five, top five, top five, top six. Rounded out with AJ Brown. We're going to save the Tennessee until we get down to Corey Davis. We'll drop down to Brandon Ayuk at eight. Brandon Ayuk has been absolutely incredible. He's the biggest riser on this list by far and away. It's a split between the production that he's put up recently and the fact that now Debo Samuel is going to be out probably for the remainder of the regular, regular season. Now, Brandon Ayuk gets Arizona, and then he gets Dallas. Flip that. He gets Dallas, and then he gets Arizona, okay? Now, Brandon Ayuk has had a touchdown or 100 yards in six straight games. A touchdown and or 100 yards in six straight games. If you look at the last five weeks, his average stat line is 11.4 targets, 
7.2 receptions, 99 yards, and he has scored three touchdowns in those five weeks. His worst half PPR performance in the last five weeks was six catches for 115 yards. That's 14 and a half half PPR fantasy points. That is his worst performance in the last five weeks. I got a, a sit start question this morning. Someone was yelling at me on Twitter about it. Michael Thomas, AJ Brown, and I think it was an Allen Robinson. They are like, I can't sit any of these guys for Brandon Ayuk. And to that, I said, I mean, there's no way I'm sitting Brandon Ayuk this week against Dallas. There are probably like four or five guys in total, four or five wide receivers in total that I would sit in favor of Brandon Ayuk and Jason Avant is not one of them. By that, I mean Michael Thomas. But yeah, Michael Thomas has been fine. Eight for 85. It seems like what he continues to do with Taysom Hill, but that don't get it done in half PPR. Maybe in full PPR, I don't know what you do, but you fucking find a way to get Brandon Ayuk into your lineup. You do not sit this man against Dallas. You do not sit this man against anybody right now because he is red fucking hot and he's my number eight wide receiver over the remainder of the season because he's the only weapon on that San Francisco 49ers offense. What else do we have? We have the pairing of Minnesota wide receivers. Adam Thielen up at 10. We have Justin Jefferson down at 16. Their next two games, Chicago at home and then the Saints on the road. We saw them play the Bears in week 10 already. Thielen caught two touchdowns, not very high volume, seven targets, only caught four of them, 43 yards, two touchdowns. Jefferson, on the other hand, saw the volume, 10 targets, eight receptions, 135 yards. Thielen is like wildly involved in the red zone though and near the end zone. So on the year, he has 10 targets, inside the 10 yard line so when the vikings get down towards their opponent's end zone Thielen is being targeted at a really really high rate he has 10 targets down there which is the fourth highest number in the nfl right now he has converted those 10 targets inside the 10 yard line into eight touchdowns those are not just receptions those are not just getting down there and getting the targets he has turned 10 targets into eight touchdowns inside the 10 yard line he has a 47.1 percent team target share down there so 47%, over 47% of the Vikings targets when they're inside the 10-yard line have gone to Adam Thielen. That is the single highest rate in the NFL. So even if he's not getting the volume that he used to get with Jeff and Justin Jefferson breaking out, even if he's not getting the downfield throws that he used to get with Justin Jefferson, getting a lot of those, he is still the most valuable player when it comes to the red zone in the NFL for fantasy football, and that's not changing anytime soon. So Thielen is a threat to go for multiple touchdowns any game. Chicago, we already saw him do it. So it's a possibility that he does it again. Both of them top 16 guys for me. We've got Allen Robinson at number 12. Now, Allen Robinson is, has seen a little bit of an uptick here with Mitch Trubisky under quarterback, right? He hadn't seen double digit targets since week five. Mitch Trubisky takes over in week 12, and then he sees 13, seven, and 13 targets. Averaging in that span, the last three weeks since Mitch Trubisky took bike over as a quarterback, 11 targets, 7.7 catches, 91 yards. He's caught three touchdowns in those three games. We'll put up the splits on the screen for you. On the left, Allen Robinson in games with Mitch Trubisky. On the right, without Mitch Trubisky. With Mitch Trubisky, he's averaging a target and a half more. He's scoring at almost half a touchdown more per game, higher rate. He's averaging almost four PPR fantasy points more per game. So things are good when Mitch Trubisky is under quarterback. Pause. Things you thought you would never, ever, 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 ever say. They get Minnesota in week 15. They get Jacksonville the week after that. So a juicy, juicy end of season schedule. If, you know, Mitch Trubisky can always have a Mitch Trubisky type game where he throws for like 130 yards. But that still probably ends up resulting in like 85 yards for Allen Robinson. So he belongs in your lineups regardless of who is under center. Who is that quarterback for the Chicago Bears? Let's drop down a little bit, talk about the Rams wide receivers. The games have been wildly inconsistent. We get hot games and everyone's like, oh my God, they're so good again. We have shit games. And they're like, oh, they're wildly inconsistent. Like that's just what fantasy is. We're just so biased towards what the previous game was. However, I think we're going to have some good feelings, good biases to end the year because the Rams in their final two games get to play the Jets and the Seahawks. On the season, the Jets have allowed the sixth most fantasy points to wide receivers. The Seahawks have allowed the single most fantasy points to wide receivers. If we look at the last five weeks, things have flipped up though. Things have changed a little bit. I just tweeted this out. Make sure you follow me on the Twitter at Nick underscore BDGE. Over the last five weeks, the Seahawks have allowed zero. They haven't allowed a receiving touchdown to a wide receiver since week nine. They have not allowed a single receiving touchdown to a wide receiver since week nine. No other team in the NFL can say that. Some teams have let up eight. A lot of teams have let up seven. Seahawks have improved. They have let up five rushing touchdowns to running backs, two receiving touchdowns to running backs, three receiving touchdowns to tight ends. So the other teams are scoring, but the wide receivers aren't getting it done. I don't think this is going to be a problem for the Rams wide receivers though. They get to play the Jets who over the last five weeks have been the number one easiest fantasy point schedule for opponent wide receivers. So look for them to do some fucking work 
in week 15 against the Jets. And then week 16, I'm not obviously scared to start them against Seattle because we know what Seattle did in the first half of the year. They've been a lot better, but the matchups have been terrible in terms of like the talent that they've gone against over the last five weeks, which I think is more indicative of why their numbers look so good. Both Cup and Woods should probably be rock solid wide receiver twos for fantasy playoffs for the rest of the season. Feel good about throwing them into your lineup. Move down a few spots to Corey Davis at wide receiver 23. I know Corey Davis flopped last week, but if you look at it objectively, they get to play Detroit and then they get to play Green Bay the week after that. And again, Jair Alexander will probably stay on AJ Brown for the most part. Corey Davis still a wide receiver two for me. All right, maybe a low end, but he's been very, very good for fantasy this year more often than he hasn't. And now we have AJ Brown's ankle, certainly something to monitor. You know, he's got that, that that Julio Jones thing going in every fucking aspect, you know, skill, movement, body, but along with that body comes the ankle. He's always hurt, but never actually out. So as long as AJ Brown is active, he's obviously in your lineup. I honestly think that's probably more helpful to Corey Davis if A.J. Brown is in the lineup because he doesn't have to get the number one cornerback on the opposing team. He's just a rock-solid possession receiver outside of A.J. Brown. He doesn't make the big plays down the field like A.J. Brown does. The yak doesn't come from Corey Davis, but he's a very good possession receiver. He's got really, really good matchups, Detroit and Green Bay. You know what else has really good matchups? Your nuts. Going against the Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0, okay? This is a beautiful new piece of technology. I don't know where, mine's actually in the shower right now because I use it in the shower because it's waterproof. This is for all you men out there. This is for all you men that need to give gifts to other men. I know we're not good at opening up. We're not good at being emotional. Listen, it's 2020. Fellas, it's okay to love your friends. It's okay to give gifts. It's okay to shave your balls. And more importantly, not cut your balls when you shave them. The Lawnmower 3.0 has proprietary technology that will not cut your balls. I don't know how they do it, but it gets done. They have a beautiful package that comes with this amazing travel case. Like this is another thing men are not good at. They're not good at like thinking about little nuanced things like a travel case. There's a little other travel case where you can keep your crop reviver, your ball toner, your ball deodorant. This will have you, the lawnmower 3.0 and the performance package on Manscaped will have you clean, it'll have you lean, it'll have you mean, and it's probably the best matchup of anybody in the fantasy playoffs. Manscaped.com, give it to your son, give it to your faja, give it to an uncle, give it to a cousin, give it to your sister. I don't give a fuck who you give it to, but just give it to somebody. Manscaped.com, Promo code BDGE when you check out, when you buy something beautiful on that website, you're going to get 20% off and you're going to get free shipping. Manscaped.com, they ship to Canada, they ship to Australia, they ship to England, they do it all. They're open worldwide, not in Mexico, as I've learned some feedback from the people down in Mexico that follow my channel. I apologize to all you amigos. Still love you. Let's round this video out. Let's round this video out with the bottom of the chart. We've got Tim Patrick making an appearance down to 26. The guy just keeps fucking getting it done. Jarvis Landry, still an outlet. Obviously, you know, we could have predicted the tough matchup against the Baltimore Ravens. Not worried about it. T.Y. Hilton making an appearance, though. Kid's been balling. I don't want to say kid, actually. He's Honestly, I say, how old is T.Y. Hilton? I was about to say the kid's been balling, and I'm like, you can't call him a kid. He's so fucking old. And then I'm like, wait. Like, I might be older than T.Y. Hilton in reality. Players, once they hit, like, 26, we're like, they're past their age, apex, their funerals, like, next week. Ah, uh, never mind. He's way older than me. 31.1. So, T.Y. Hilton, yeah, he's kind of fucking old. I won't call him a kid. But the old man's been balling. The old man's been, he's been balling so much, that motherfucker needs a lawnmower 3.0. I'm going to send one to T.Y. Hilton. If you have his address, let me know. But my man's been balling, and now he gets Houston, a beautiful matchup, who he just annually racks up the box score against and did so a few weeks ago and then they get Pittsburgh who's obviously a tough defense but they're not that that good against wide receivers in the past so that can be exploited T.Y. Hilton pretty rock solid wide receiver three for the fantasy playoffs we got T. Higgy we got Curtis Samuel now Curtis Samuel is going to move pretty significantly depending on Christian McCaffrey status depending on DJ Moore status so if, the, if them two are out again for week 15 he's probably going to move up to around wide receiver 24 25 in that range ish if they're both playing DJ Moore will probably be like bike to bike with Curtis Samuel in the rankings and it, it's a big hit to him DJ Chark still on the list even though he's not producing like he should be on the list but they get Gardner Minshew bike and Gardner Minshew and DJ Chark have a little something something going on they got a little affair going on I guarantee you DJ Chark be using Manscaped otherwise Gardner Minshew would not keep that affair going okay then Devontae Parker rounds it out but he's got the hamstring injury. I don't know if he's going to play this week. If he misses it, obviously he's all the way down there. If he plays, still not great because the 
Tua and Devontae Parker. Devontae Parker ain't using a lot more 3.0. I'll tell you that for a fact. Big facts only. Okay, that was it. I had to do this quickly because we got a lot of shit going on today. We have a snowstorm incoming into New York tonight, and I have to make sure I get all my shit ready and done because we might see a power outage, which would fucking be terrible. Honestly, it might be nice to get like a technological reset and not have to look at my phone or my computer if the power goes out for like three hours, because that's something I haven't done probably since like 1999. So we're preparing for a storm over here on the East Coast. Everybody stay safe. Make sure you get all your toilet paper, right? Because you're going to run out of 40 rolls of toilet paper in 24 hours. Yeah, and that's it. So manscaped.com, promo code BDGE, 20% off plus free shipping. It's the best gift you'll be able to give for this holiday season. I love you. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I will see y'all on Fade the Public tomorrow. Go watch this morning's Monk Bed Breakdowns video. Bye.